this week, we will continue to introduce to you two more design patterns, uh, namely the observer design pattern and also its generalization, uh, which is called the event-driven design. But the two patterns are really trying to solve the same design challenge, the same design problem. So we have to talk about, first of all, what the motivating scenario is for us to apply these two uh, patterns. And we need to talk about whether they might exist, maybe multiple design uh, alternatives, and see what the pros and cons are for each one of them, and before we can devise uh, the final ultimate solution. Uh, let's see what the learning objectives are for the uh, lecture series this week. So number one, we want to understand what the motivating problem is, which is about distributed clients and servers. So here, when I say distributed, uh, there are two possibilities. Either it's a conceptually distributed, in which case we simply got a separation between the concept of server versus the concept of, versus the concept of uh, clients. So they might just simply just be processes in the same uh, computer. They don't have to be uh, physically distributed. So the second poss possibility would be maybe the clients and server that are really geographically uh, distributed, in which case it might involve certain uh, remote procedure call, which is uh, what the first design attempt will actually try to do. However, we are going to restrict our discussion about the design uh, architecture uh, and also implementation uh, only at the design level. So we are not going to show you uh, the details about how you can make a remote procedure call. So outside the scope of this lecture and the course, you may actually want to search for how you can do a remote procedure call in the language that you're interested in programming, like a Java or C Sharp. Number three. Uh, we're going to talk about the second design attempt, which is the common uh, observer design pattern, which will uh, very elegantly solve the problem where you only got one single server or the subjects and multiple clients or observers. So that will be uh, the first design pattern we would like to talk about. And then we, have, we want to generalize the uh, scenario into multiple subjects versus uh, multiple observer, which is completely general scenario, in which case observer design pattern may, may not be able to deal with such uh, complexity at the runtime, in which case we want to use uh, the so-called event-driven design. So that's something we'd like to talk, uh, talk about the, uh, the rationale for why we want to have such a design. And then we'll speak about how you can implement this design in Java versus IFO. So these are two uh, different object-oriented programming languages, but you will see how the uh, the case uh, for IFO is actually much easier for you to think about the design. But for implementation, you might choose for Java, but we'll talk about design again. That's the emphasis for this course. In order to do uh, to implement the event-driven design in IFO, we need to learn we need to learn about a new keyword called agents. So you can think about the agents uh, is analogous to the C function pointers that you learned about previously in your 2031, the uh, the Unix course, the C programming course. Or for those of you who program in uh, C sharp, so that's uh, uh, there's a construct called delegates, which has already existed in the language for a long time. There was also some recent addition to Java called Lambda construct. That's also similar, but not exactly the same. So in case you want to apply what we learned about the agents, you can definitely try to use uh, these constructs later beyond this course, okay? just a, a reference point. Okay, so now let's talk about the motivating problem for uh, uh, the patterns that we talk about this week. So what we are really talking about, uh, let's just give one example. Let's say we talk about a weather station. A weather station simply maintains uh, various weather data, let's say temperature, uh, humidity, and pressure. So these are the three measures that we're interested. So that'll be the server side. So what about client sites? You can think about the client side, we may either have maybe some mobile app or desktop app. Let's say we just have mobile app, which is very common these days. You can simply check uh, the weather measures, different measures for about the weather data simply on your mobile phone or your, or your tablets. So various kinds of applications on these weather data should, regular, should regularly update the display. Basically, every time you, you refresh uh, the browser or, re or refresh the screen of your uh, mobile phone, it will just show you the latest measure. And sometimes the, uh, the, app, uh, the apps themselves may just refresh themselves. You don't need to manually do that, right? So that's kind of the problem we are trying to solve uh, in this lecture. Let's now assume the following three applications, which can be mobile app, let's say. Let's say we got a forecast app, which will only worry about uh, if we should expect any rainy weather, 
due to reduced pressure. Basically, that's something to do with the physics. You don't need to ask me why. So that's uh, something we can take for granted. So whenever you go from one pressure level, uh, one pressure level into a reduced level, in, in which case it's more likely it's going to rain. Okay, just uh, 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 some basic uh, physics. And also, let's talk about condition. That's just uh, just the second app for the weather data. And for the condition, we are only interested in two measures over here. So we are interested in temperature in Celsius, and also we are interested uh, in uh, humidity in percentages. So for condition, you only worry about two. But for forecast, you only worry about one, right? That's uh, kind of the difference. The, the important point to notice is not necessarily every app you're developing should really worry about all the weather data that's available to you. You, only be, uh, you will try to be selective about what you want to use in order to display to the clients who's using your weather app. Finally, we also got another third app called Statistics, in which case we're gonna show uh, all the different measures for just the temperature. For example, we might wanna show what's the minimum temperature so far, and what's the maximum, and what's the average so far, right? So now, before we move on to the first design attempt uh, for this particular design problem over here, please make sure you understand the following. First, uh, first of all, understand what the problem is. We got a single, we got a single weather station, which got different measures for the weather data, and also what are the uh, uh, various uh, measures that should be of the interest to each of the apps. For example, for forecast, you are interested in pressure, and for condition app, you are interested in temperature and also humidity. And for the statistics app, you are interested in just the temperature. Make sure you're familiar with those before you move on to the next video.